Hi, my name is Dan Greenwood. I am a brand specialist with Alpine Electronics, and today we're going to go over how to install the KTA 200M onto the back of your ILX W650. Now, this is a follow-up video to our W650 install guide, so if you haven't seen that video yet, we're going to put a link down in the description so you can check that out first because we're actually going to go into the same vehicle and add this to that existing install. So, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to take our amplifier and attach it to the back of our W650 as you can see right here. That's why we have a very shallow mounting depth on our radio so you can actually put a lot of power still inside your dash. Now this is going to be the KTA 450. This is our four channel amplifier that we've had for a little while now but the 200M is going to be the exact same size and a very similar installation process. Today we're actually going to go over both installations and show you the differences between the two. That way, no matter which amplifier you have, we'll get you covered. Let's go ahead and start by opening up the KTA 200M and see what comes in the box. We are going to have your installation and warranty information. Be sure to go through that. We have the amplifier itself. In this baggie, we would have some zip ties in case you need them for your installation. Screws, and we're gonna go through these here in a second. These are uh, some of the mounting brackets that will actually allow you to uh, install this amplifier in another application, like if you decide to put this on an amp rack or somewhere else in the car, not behind the radio. We actually give you some mounting feet so you can do that. And then this is gonna be the harness for the amplifier. And we're gonna go into that in a moment as well. And last but not least, this is the mounting bracket that is gonna allow us to install the amplifier onto the back of our W650. Once I can get it out of here, there we go. So that's gonna allow us to do what we call the power stack. All right, let's go ahead and take a closer look at everything. Starting with the amplifier here, you can see it's very small and it's the exact same footprint as the KTA 450. Now this uh, has an inset harness and you'll see why here whenever we get the installation into the dash kit. And on this side of the amplifier, we have our settings. It's real simple. We just have our gain and then our crossover. And uh, like I showed before, this is the mounting bracket to uh, allow us to install this into the back of the W650. As far as tools needed for this install, it's really going to vary on, your, on uh, what kind of car you're putting it in. It shouldn't be too much different than the tools that we used on our last video in our 2017 Nissan Rogue. Now when installing the KTA 200M, we're going to need to run a power wire all the way to the battery. And the reason why is because this thing pulls a lot of power. Now your radio harness is probably not going to have enough to support that. So we're going to run an amp kit, something similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now. You don't need too much for this. Just about a 10 gauge amp kit will work. As long as it can do 20 amps or higher, you're good. Uh, now we're going to need to run that power wire all the way out to the battery. So depending on where your battery is in your car, it could be under the hood, it could be in your trunk. Just really depends on the car. Uh, and the Nissan Rogue, for example, uh, in the car we're working on today, it is under the hood, which means we do need to run the power wire through the firewall. Now, if you feel uncomfortable doing that, that's okay. Uh, you feel free to reach out to your local authorized Alpine dealer and see if they can do that for you. If you're installing the KTA 450, the chances are you might not need to run a power wire because it doesn't pull as much current as the 200M. The way you're gonna check that is by finding the fuse panel in your car. You'll find, uh, look for the radio fuse. Now, if you can't find it, uh, look in your manual that came with your car and look for fuse panel location. It'll probably guide you exactly where you need to go. And you're looking for a fuse that is 15 or higher. That is the amps rating. So if you have a 15 amp fuse or higher, then you're probably going to be okay installing the KTA 450 and powering it off of your radio harness. Now do keep in mind that we still do recommend you still you run a power wire out to the battery even in the case of the 450 just for best results. If you are having any weird performance issues with the amplifier being powered off the radio harness, then chances are you're probably going to want to run a power wire out to your battery. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and run over to our bench and we're going to go over how to uh, mount this amplifier to the back of the radio and go over the harness that comes with it. 
All right, let's take a closer look at these screws that come with the uh, kit. Now there's gonna be these four stubby screws. These are actually what's gonna mount the bracket to the back of the radio. There's these four uh, more coarse threaded screws. Those are actually gonna be if you're using the side mounting feet and mounting it to like an amp rack. We're not gonna be needing these today, so we'll put them to the side. And then these silver screws, which are going to actually replace two screws on the bottom of the radio. Now this is the back of the W650. This is the top. And that's actually getting these two bottom Phillips screws need to come out. All right. The screw on the right is actually the screw that we just pulled out of the radio. The screw on the left is the one that comes with the kit. The screw on the left is the one we're going to put back in the radio with the mounting bracket. And as you can see, it's a little bit longer, so it's going to make it a lot easier to do. All right. So we have our bracket and we have our amplifier. And we look on the back of the amplifier, we'll see four holes. Two here, two here. You also notice how when we put our bracket on here, you cannot put it the wrong way around. So it'll actually just slide right into place and these four mounting holes will line up with the threaded holes on the amplifier. So let's go ahead and screw this down. Okay, so we're all mounted. And you also notice how there's a nice big open gap here next to where the harness plugs in. Now the way that this will mount to the radio is really simple. There are these two feet on the top of the amplifier that are actually going to go into these two grooves at the top of the radio, like so. They kind of hook in. And then the bottom two feet, the bottom two holes, where we pulled those screws, they will line up, and then you put your screws in. Now we're not gonna mount this yet, and you might notice why, because it's gonna be really hard to get to all of our plugs with this amplifier in the way. So we're actually gonna screw this in when we get into the vehicle before it goes into the dash. Now, before we do that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are using the USB extension that we did include with the W650. Now the reason why is because we include a right angle adapter that will also make sure it keeps it nice and flat so your amplifier will fit behind here. All right, let's talk about the harness. This is gonna be just one plug and there's gonna be your RCA inputs. These are actually gonna plug in to the pre-out harness that comes with your W650 right here. There's actually gonna be one labeled sub and that's gonna plug right into that. There's also this little pigtail hanging off. This is actually for a ruck knob, so if you wanna have a separate sub control, you can totally do that. Now we're gonna have our main 12 volt constant in on the yellow wire, the black wire is going to be our ground. So this is what's going to run out to the battery and this is what's going to go to a chassis ground in the vehicle. This is our remote turn on wire. It also has a little pass through. And what's nice about that is on your radio harness, it'll actually just plug in to the one that labeled remote which is also the blue with the white stripe. And if you have a separate amplifier, you can still power that up with this little pigtail here. And in the case of the 200M, that is the only connection you actually need to make to your radio harness. Now here is gonna be your outputs. Now, uh, they're gonna be pretty, pretty heavy gauge here. Brown wire with a black stripe and a brown wire. This will be your speaker out. So this will be, the black stripe will be your negative and then the brown solid will be your positive. Now, what we'll do is uh, we'll actually extend this out with our own speaker wire so we can run that to the back of the vehicle to hook up to the sub-enclosure. Now, if you're having any difficulty running, powering, uh, if you're having any difficulty running this harness into the amplifier behind this bracket here, easy little trick is to mount the bracket after you plug this in and just run your wires accordingly. You wanna make sure that this area here is nice and flat because your dash kit it mounts there. You'll see that here in a moment. If you're installing the KTA 450, the mounting is going to be just like the 200M. You're going to also want to rot your harness underneath this bracket, just like we did here to keep this area flat. Now the difference is it's going to be your connections here. So instead of just having two RCAs for sub, we're going to have four because we have a fortune amplifier. Now the way that this works is the white is going to be your front left. So we just hook it up to the pre-out harness from the radio. Gray is going to be your front right. 
and you don't have to remember this, it's also uh, in the manual. Your green is going to be your rear left, which goes to the white, and then your uh, purple will be your rear right. And then that's how you're getting your signal from your radio. You will power it up with a remote wire just like the 200 m it's just going to plug right into your harness. And uh, as long as your power rating is good, you'll have your power and ground and your speaker wires just plug right into your harness. Uh, this is going to go out to your vehicle side. So instead of the radio four wires going into your harness, you'll just have the amplifier do that instead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of mock up what it should look like outside of the dash so you guys can get a better view. Okay, so we will mount this down using our two longer screws that came with the amplifier. Now, like I said before, we don't actually don't want to mount this yet until we're in the vehicle. Uh, I just want you guys to get a, an idea of a way to route the wires. And we designed this to where all of your cables are going to come out of the bottom of the radio, as you can see here. So you want to make sure you kind of flatten everything out, spread everything out. That way you have as much room to work with as possible. So this will go into your dash and then this will be the front. Now we're going to go into the vehicle and that way you guys can see what it really looks like inside of a car. All right, before we uh, work on the vehicle, we are going to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Okay, so we have the radio removed from the dash and uh, the harness is unplugged. So I'm going to go take it over to the bench and remove the uh, two bottom screws. That way we can put the longer screws in when we put the bracket in for the new amplifier. All right, so we have our power and ground wires and our speaker wires for the sub-enclosure already ran behind the radio. I uh, went ahead and put quick disconnect terminals on all the connections. That way we can plug and unplug this uh, very easily. So we're going to go ahead and start hooking everything up. And I'm going to start by doing the connections on the radio itself. So we'll go ahead and get the microphone. Steering wheel controls if you have them. I already have the harn main harness plugged in, so I'm going to get the make sure the parking brake wire is hooked up. You need that for your menu access. Our USB cable. Now, also remind you guys that we do include the right angle one in the package uh, in the box of the radio, so you are going to want to use that one. That way, it'll fit. We're going to go ahead and mount the radio now, and just like we uh, showed you before at the bench. It's going to be a little tricky because there's going to be a lot of cables here. Before we get all this mounted, you're going to notice how the controls to the amplifier are actually going to be covered up by the dash kit. So you want to make sure that you have all this stuff set up before you put this in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and include a picture right here showing um, where we recommend putting the gain as well as uh, the settings or the uh, crossover. So 80 hertz is kind of the standard, but if you feel like you want to run 60 or 120, uh, you go ahead and set it up to whatever you want or off if you want to use the radios crossover. So just make sure all the cables are running down. It's going to be a snug fit, but that's okay. And then we put our screws in. Now the reason why we have to do it this way, if you guys haven't figured out yet, is because it's going to be really hard to plug in some of these cables, like the microphone and the USB, if this amplifier is in the way. So that's why we're doing it in this order. All right, so we'll make the rest of our connections. We'll make our remotes. So that way the amplifier knows when to turn on and off. We're going to hook up our uh, sub input, so the uh, from the pre-out harness. We're going to go ahead and connect our speaker outputs here. And my antenna. And the last thing is going to be our power and ground connections for the amplifier. All right. So once you get all your connections done, I always just kind of give it a once over to make sure I didn't forget anything. It looks like we're all good, so we're just going to tuck everything back in the dash. Make sure all the cables are running out of the back underneath the radio here. And then we're just going to screw it in. 
All right, so uh, next step is uh, to go out under the hood and make our connection at the battery and then uh, make sure to get the uh, ground connection hooked back up and we're going to start testing everything. Okay, so we have our power wire here ran through the firewall and we have some split loom over to the cable to protect it in the engine compartment. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to connect the ring to the uh, positive terminal battery. There's actually an extra post right here that is not fused right off the terminal. That's perfect. And we'll go ahead and put some zip ties in to secure the cable down and uh, make sure that we can still access this fuse if we ever need to. Okay, so I'm just going to make a zip tie connection here. I'm going to leave a little bit of slack on this so we can actually tuck the fuse holder behind the battery so it'll clear the hood um, and also make it serviceable. So if you ever get a new battery or anything, this will not be in the way. And we'll go ahead and flush cut this. And then we'll just tuck that down in there. Perfect. Now, uh, the reason why we're not going to show you the, going through the firewall in this car is because every car is going to be a little different. So what I show you here, chances are it's probably not going to apply in your vehicle. So uh, look for a grommet or any kind of uh, place where you can drill through and put a, your own grommet in. And as far as grounding the amplifier, look under your dash for a factory ground point, kind of like what you're seeing here. Just uh, attach the ground of the amplifier to the factory bolt and that'll be a great connection. And like I said before, if you are uncomfortable doing it, uh, reach out to your local Alpine authorized dealer and uh, they'll get you taken care of. All right, so the radio is back in the dash and the amplifier is all hooked up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and connect the negative terminal and uh, give everything a test. All right, everything's tested. Everything's working great. So we got everything put back together. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some settings in the radio that we do suggest messing around with. Okay, so we're going to go into our setup here. and We're going to engage, then disengage and then re-engage our parking brake. Make sure everything lights up. If that doesn't work, then your parking brake is not hooked up. We did go over that in the first video. We'll go to sound, and we're going to go over to subwoofer, and we're going to check this first. We want to make sure that our sub out is turned on. If you do this install and uh, you turn it on and you notice that your sub is not playing, that is the first, set the first setting I would look at. Uh, and then also you do have your sub level here, so you can mess with your level independently and uh, right now we just have it cranked up. Next step is we're going to click advanced and we're going to go over to crossover and the reason why we're going to go into here is this is an optional step. Now if you're listening and you feel like you want a little bit more bass but uh, you're also not going full tilt on your volume, let's say you're only going up to maybe 20 or 25 and we do go up to 35, then a little trick you can do is go to your front output, which says front right here. You switch that by clicking the channel button. And then we can actually lower the level of the front output. Now we'll go to minus three. And we can do the same to the rear. And now take a listen to it and see what you think. And of course you can go down further if you feel like you need to. Um, because you're going to be safe to go pretty high on this volume. If, Like I said, if you're only going up to about 20, 25. I would do this, that way you can get a little bit more bass without uh, having to do any more distortion or anything like that. And that's pretty much it. All right, and now you're done. It's amazing how much a little bit of bass can really help improve the sound of your system. And that's it, your install is done. Not too bad, right? So you might be asking yourself, okay, this is awesome, now what's the next thing I can do to my car? Well, if you did the KTA 450, I really recommend taking a look at our R-Series speakers. They really pair up nicely with that amplifier. Now, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at our tech support, 1-800-TECH-101. If you also check out our knowledge base online at uh, kb.alpine-usa.com. And if you need to find your local authorized Alpine retail specialist to help with your install, You'll find uh, their information on our website at alpine-usa.com forward slash stores. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great day.